Okay, I am waiting for us to get started. And I just wanted to let you know you're here. And I will be able to see you all because I'm standing up seeing everything. So I'm waiting for everybody to pull in. Hi, Shannon. And I have this on Facebook and I have this on Instagram. You'll be able to get to the Facebook on my Facebook page, uh, the replay. And um, I just wanted to say I'm so glad that y'all are here. We're going to wait for people to come in. Steve Mokler, huh? I see you. And... Um, it is very interesting to see when people walk in and being able to see it. It's kind of distracting, I'll let you know. So we're going to talk about watercolor today. Anybody ready to talk about watercolor? And maybe you have, you don't know what to have. Maybe you only have Crayola paint. That's fine too. Hi, Ruby and Lucy. I see you. Um... I also wanted to say, so I wanted to show you first what we were going to need for this class. And I want you all to know that you don't have to have expensive stuff in order to do this class. I plan on doing it every day from 2 to 3 o'clock almost every day and, well, Monday through Friday uh, until I get real bored with this. And let's see how many little things we can do. Um, but I felt like I just wanted to give back and give you all something. I've had people ask me if, hi Rebecca, um, I've seen people ask me several times about my watercolors. And so I thought I would show you what I have. Uh, for your own information, um, and I'm going to show my face. Hi, I know this is crazy, right? Um, all right, so what I wanted to say is let's start with supplies, uh, because I do want to actually make something today, all right? So you can have all kinds of different supplies to do watercolors. You do not have to actually have expensive watercolors in order to do this. Hi, Amy Bellis and Caitlin. Um, and so what I wanted to show you all was my collection of watercolors, so this watercolor set is just from Michaels. The, it's at, um, there's nothing special about it. Um, it has all of the colors. It opens just like that. Um, this is probably your most common. Okay. Then I have something called Angora watercolors. Now I bought these from Amazon. Um, and also from a place called Dick Blick, and that's an art supply story. And this is one of my favorites, and it's been used so much. I've This is my third palette. This is one that I use all the time. So just wanted to show you what those two look like. Uh, I will probably be using this one today, just so you can see. I also wanted to show you that you can buy, they come in actual tubes like this and the ones that come in tubes like this you actually have to buy a palette or something like this to actually um hi debbie thompson you actually have to buy a palette to actually put them in and so that's what a palette would look like that hasn't been used for a while so what you do is you actually squeeze out paint just like that and that is how it comes out and it's usable now the benefit of using paint in tubes like this is you can have bigger quantities of it right like the, you're good with how much you actually have with this but with that you could have big piles of it and you could paint really big but for today, we don't really have to do that. So this is one type of palette, and it keeps everything done. You don't have to keep it wet either. Watercolors are great. Hi, um, Aunt Carla, Summer, Evelyn. All right, and so this one is also a tubed set of paints that I've put on. This is something called Tim Holtz. 
um, palette and it has little, it's really skinny. You see how skinny that is? And I have made my own palette with it and I've put all my fancy colors in. These are very expensive. This is called Core uh, Watercolors. So that's what that is. I also want to, people have them in this type of thing. So this is a little baby palette. It's a travel case. And you can just do something like that. This is great to travel with. Crayola makes something similar to this that you could use also. Okay. So that is my paint. I wanted to show you what my paint would look like. I want to talk about paintbrushes. So everybody probably has, I don't know, like little paintbrushes like this. This paintbrush, this is called a bristle paintbrush. They're white and kind of hard and stiff. You don't want to use these for watercolor. Watercolor takes a light touch. Um, you want the watercolor to actually soak up. So that's, this is called a mop. And a mop is really heavy. This one's actually wet. Um, and it's very, very soft. It's almost like a makeup brush. That's another size. That's another mop. Okay. It holds water really well and the color well. I use this all the time. This is a small mop. This is my favorite paintbrush. If you can see, it is, um, really dirty. Then I have really thin little baby brushes like this. The only reason I have a lot of little baby brushes like this is because I like to paint really fine detail. And um, especially with all of the fur and the animals that I do, that's why I have these. Okay, so we'll be using these. Well, I'll be using this one today for sure. Okay, but I want to show you how this big mop works. Okay. So you'll need a, I like to use a regular pencil. Number two pencil is, works just great. And I like to use a pen at the very, very end. It's a black pen. This is my favorite pen. It's called a Uniball Signo 207 Bold. And what I like about it is I literally, it dries permanent once it's dry but it has to be completely per dry before it actually becomes permanent but I love this okay so now let's talk about paper so everybody probably knows about watercolor paper or have seen this at Walmart or uh, Michaels or something like that so this is just regular watercolor paper watercolor paper is really really heavy-duty this is a hundred and forty pound which basically means that um, the pen is called a uniball signo can you see that uniball signo 207 and I'll do it over here on this side uniball signo 207 bold all right, so my watercolor paper is 140 pound, and what I wanted to show you about that is see how hard that is? Do you hear it? So this is very hard paper and does really good um, with watercolor. Like I really enjoy it. It has a big, it has a texture to it, so you can actually uh, do some really neat things with it. Then there's something called mixed media paper, and this is 90 pound paper. This is a small little notebook. I like to do this a lot, and I'm just gonna show you some doodles that I have here. And it is a little bit more flimsy. It's a little bit flimsy compared to the watercolor paper, but it does really nice things with the actual watercolor, and it does have as much texture as the watercolor paper okay so I'm basically just showing you what things look like okay and we will get to we have the regular watercolor paper again this is 140 I just wanted to show it's a different brand there's really no different well 
some artists would say there's a big difference between brands. I honestly am not that picky, so that's um, just a different brand of that big watercolor paper. This is just a mixed media. This is basically that same as that mixed media one. And I wanted to show you what it looked like. This is a little bit thicker paper, but it can show up and it's one, it's probably one of my favorite, um, palettes or uh, sketch pads. I also want to say I bet not a lot of you have watercolor paper. So I wanted to say that you can do this on anything. So this is just a regular drawing pad, okay? And I wanted to show you it's a 70 pound paper, which means it's very thin. Y'all see this? It's very, very thin. The reason this is drawing paper is it's really meant to do drawing with, okay, and things like that. It is not meant for water. This is something that I just did beforehand, and I wanted to show you it bleeds. So if you have something like this, I suggest you A, either put, um, you could put, some kind of cardboard down underneath it. You could take it off and put it on your table. Um, you could put even um, some wax paper down underneath it so it protects the rest of the palette or the paper, okay? Um, so that's what drawing paper looks like. I also would assume some of you have regular sketch pads. This is one of those big sketch pads. I use this as a journal, basically, and uh, it's from Michael's. You know, you can buy it for $5. I absolutely love this type um, of journal. I write in it every day almost. See, all my little sketches. Okay, so I did a little test on this one also. So... What I want you to see is how it buckles. It didn't necessarily go all the way through here onto this other page, but it did uh, buckle a little bit, all right? But it didn't bleed as much. But this is just an example, okay? Now, how many people don't have an actual, they don't have a sketchbook or fancy paper or anything like that? And just have copy paper. You know, the kind that's in the computer, in the printer. So I wanted to say you can use this. You do not have to have special stuff in order to do this. So what I wanted to show you was what this looks like. This is the same amount. This is the other side of it. It's kind of buckled here. I don't know if y'all can see that. And it did bleed through, but that's okay. So the way I did this was I took about three or four pieces like this, and that's what I painted on. And I was okay that I was going to end up wasting these pieces of paper. Not to mention you could probably make something out of them later once they're dry, but right now this is just practice, so it doesn't matter, okay? So go ahead, use your copy paper, okay? Now, how about we make something? What do you think? Is that good? I think we should make something. Well, first off, I want to do some drills, and I wanted to show you what watercolor drills may look like. So when you first start watercolor, you don't really know how the watercolor is actually going to do. So one of the best things to do, and I believe Ruby, my niece, we've done this before, and where we have taken the paint and the paintbrush, and we have made marks and we literally have just tested how the paint actually applies to the paper and how we actually, uh, what does it do? Does it bleed? Does it not bleed? How far apart do I have to make these so they don't work? Another one is to make straight lines all the way down your paper and then see how far, like, uh, hi, Lindsay, and Mallory, um, how big and like do a big skinny, big skinny all the way through this to make a plaid or to make a tic-tac-toe board or something like this. All right. Um, it's just very good practice. It helps you feel more comfortable with the paint. 
to that, you can then go to even more things where you start working with shapes. And that's what this one is. So, way I've done this, also, I decided I wasn't going to put any more paint on my brush. You see how this has got a whole lot more paint in it, and this gets lighter down here? So, that's a good test, too, is to do line, shape, line, shape, line, shape, and never put any water or put anything on there, okay? Um, all right, so... I just wanted to show you what those kind of exercises would look like. Okay, let's make something. I'm going to go ahead and just use copy paper today, all right? So, we're going to do some drills first. I am, let me put up some of my stuff. I'm going to put, I'm going to get my watercolor out right there. I'm going to get my paintbrush right here. And I think that's what I'm going to start with. I will say this if you're about to paint. Things that you need. Paper. Pencil. Paintbrush. A thing of water. This is a baby a glass of water. I want you to know that I use this little fancy thing here. This is called a um, rinse well. And basically I hit the button and all the water gets sucked out of it. And new water comes back. It's just one of those like little cool things that I have yeah but you don't have to have that but water is really important when it comes to watercolors mainly well it's called watercolor right so I'm gonna open up this and can we all see yes I think we can that's perfect the first thing you got to do when you do watercolors is you've got to activate the watercolors because they're dry and cakey right now. So the best thing I know to do is I have a little spray bottle and I squirt it. But if you don't have a squirt bottle, the best thing I like to do is to take my, my paint and, oh, FYI, you're also going to need uh, some, um, what do you call this? What do you call this? Paper towels, yeah. Anybody who's ever taken my class knows that I lose words. All right. Can we all see that? Yeah. With the little paper towel there? Yes. So I put water on my brush. Okay. And then I come in here and I dip it. Water on brush. Dip it. Water on brush and dip it. And I do this over and over again. Now, I'm really careful. See how I just got blue in my little well here? I want all of that paint out of my brush before I go to the next one. And the reason is, is you don't want to make a mess with your watercolors. Because they all will blend together. And honestly, remember that ugly one that I showed you all at the beginning? It had so many. Um... I will also say this, the white, I don't ever use, well, you can use white, but it doesn't work very well because with watercolors, technically, you're supposed to use the white paper as your white. So, all right, I have wetted all of this, and now I'm going to do little drills, all right? So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get some water on my brush, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to get, let's do red. So the way I'm doing this, I'm going to bring it up so y'all can see. Can y'all see this better? So I have it and I'm getting it, putting it in the well and the paint. And if you notice, they, this watercolor has these little tray things here. You can like rub it over it like I'm dipping it on it so I don't have a whole bunch of paint on it okay now I'm gonna show you a few things I have paint on my brush and I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna make some marks I've not gone back for paint I've not made it straight but do you see how a lot of paint little paint and that's what I'm wanting us to make sure that we see how much paint we have. If you, ha like, if you went faster than me or 
even slower than me and you still have paint on your brush, keep going. See how far that paint can go. See that's getting pretty good, but it's all becoming about the same colors. Do you see that? That is what I want us to know, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and flip that off. Everybody with me so far? Tell me if you're with me. Say I'm with ya. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I so I've cleaned out my brush. It's very important between colors to clean out your brush because you don't want them to mix, okay? So I've got a clean brush with white with water. I'm gonna go into my blue now just because. All right, I'm going into blue and this time I'm gonna make circles. And I'm wanting to see how I don't want, here's the test, I don't want them to touch. How close can you get them without touching? I also, oh, I touched there. And I touched there. But do you see how it's giving that at the bottom, like more paint? Watercolors are nothing but layers. And I want you to just pay attention to how it actually goes. All right? Looking pretty good here. Now, continue that until you don't have any more, which I did, so I didn't have much. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to go with, I don't know, let's go with green. And this time, I want to see how little of a line I can make with this brush. Okay? So I have green on my paintbrush and this is a light touch. Okay? Everybody, I want you light as possible. Thin as possible. See how these were nice and thick? I want thin baby ones. So I'm coming here. Now this one, I am actually, if you notice, I am looking like I'm actually writing almost. I'm holding it like a pencil. And I'm making little marks. I'm trying to get as close as possible and as thin as possible without it touching. All right. I'm gonna do just all the way down. Now you see I got a little bit fatter down here at the bottom. That works though. Now, that's good practice. Everybody practicing with me? So, did you see that? I had more paint on my brush, so I wiped it off on my paper towel first. All right? Then I'm putting it in my water. What that does is it saves my water from getting really dirty really fast. Okay? All right. Girls, how are we doing? We about ready to make something? Really, really make something, maybe? Maybe. All right, I think we're going to try making a um, plaid, like I showed you. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go with purple. So I went with straight purple. Y'all aren't seeing how I'm doing that, are you? So I went into purple. And this time, I'm going to go in here and do big, small, big, small. Now, look what I'm doing. I'm painting it like this first. Then I'm rotating my paintbrush so it's vertical. And I'm going down that way. And it's really lightly. Now, I'm going to keep going, but I need more paint. So I'm putting my paintbrush in the water a little bit. Going back to my paint. Ooh, that's a nice line. I forgot to twist. Come back. I didn't go into my water just then. I just went straight to my paint. That's okay. Do you see how potent that is potent meaning it's just got a whole lot of pigment to it 
All right, now I realize that this is not the most exciting thing in the world. But in order to make stuff pretty, you've got to practice sometimes. And that's what I'm doing right here. I promise we will make something. But we've got to finish this plaid before we do. All right. So I've made my vertical lines. Now I'm going to make my horizontal lines. That's going straight across. I'm going to do it with purple, the same purple. So I want to see what it looks like when it goes on top of each other. So I've got some purple on my brush and I'm going to go horizontal all the way across. Do you see how that's more potent, more pigment, and less pigment down here at the bottom? We're going to continue that. Now, I lost it, which means I need to continue. I need more paint. So I'm going to put some water on my brush. Come in here to get some more paint. And I'm going to go over that same thing. So what that taught me is, is by the time I make it all the way down here, I may need to reapply my paint. So I'm going to come back and get some paint. And as everyone knows, Megan does not do a straight line. Art is not perfect, people. We are just practicing. We're not making masterpieces here. This is just practice. Now, let's talk about what we learned here. Because there's some good stuff here that we learned. I'm going to put, I should have probably put that on my paper towel first. But, all right. Let's look at what we learned at this piece of paper. Can we all see it? It's a little closer. One, when we first get paint on our brush, it's got a whole lot of pigment. A lot of paint. The farther we go, the lighter it gets. Okay, that's two things. That was two. Third thing that we learned was look at what it does when it overlaps. So when it overlaps, it gets darker. Every single one of these is darker where it overlaps, which means layers. Watercolors are great at layers. Okay, I also want us to pay attention to look at how much so, did you have too much water on your brush? If you had too much water on your brush, look what would have happened. And maybe you all know this. I have too much water on my brush. And it bleeds everywhere. Do you see that? And it soaks in weird and all that good stuff. If I have not enough... And this is almost dry. This paintbrush is almost dry. And I get paint on my brush. I can control it really good, but it dries out really fast. Okay? So, just things to know. Watercolor takes practice. And guess what? Watercolor, I hated watercolor when I was growing up. Hated it. Couldn't stand it. And only wanted to paint with acrylic. And it's taken me years to learn to love it. So let's make some flowers. What do you think? Easy does it flowers. So we're kind of going to do something like this. Okay. And what I want you to see here is that it's got a light layer right here. You see that? Then it's got a dark layer right here. It's got some purple in it. It's got some yellow in it. And... It even has some black in it, but we can't see it that well. So, this is what we're going to do. It may take multiple papers. I'm going to take my pence, my paintbrush. Let's call it what it is. I think I'm going to put it. No, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep it this way. All right. I am going to put my paint my water, my paintbrush in the water. And now I'm going to go into my red. And I'm going to draw a circle. And a circle. And I want you to fill up this entire piece of paper with circles. Alright. And they can be bigger. 
See, that one was bigger. This one I'm even going to do bigger. So, four across. That works. Little bitty one. Medium. Getting some more. Going bigger. And going even bigger with this one. Now, I know that this doesn't look like it's rocket science. And I know painting circles might be a little boring. But I promise we'll get there. How y'all like this online thing? Hmm? Y'all like it? Or are y'all like, oh my gosh, everybody's doing it now. I kind of feel that way. But at the same time, I like to teach my people. All right, are y'all seeing this? I'm doing smalls now. I know that I'm going faster than you, but I'm doing it on purpose. Watercolor is a fast paint job, okay? Because it dries so fast. That's the whole point. That's why a lot of old masters would take it traveling. Thank you, Rebecca, for telling me. <laughs> um, all right. All right, so I have now made this many circles. All right, young girls in here, how many circles do we have? Let's see if Megan can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Twenty-four! I could multiply that, but I'll let you all do that. How's that for homeschooling? <laughs> okay, I'm also stalling a little bit. I want to show you that... It bleeds through the other side. It actually didn't do too bad on my other piece of paper, so that's actually a plus. Yours might be a little bit different, but that's okay. So this is our first layer. And even in our first layer, we can see how the water and how the paint, there was more paint there than there is here. That's what's so great about watercolor. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a different, are we ready for this? So this time I'm going to get orange. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to move my piece of paper and make it horizontal this time. Okay. So I'm coming. I'm getting water on my brush. And I'm going to go into orange. So I have orange on my brush. And I'm going to go. This time I'm not. I want it to overlap and I want you to be able to see it. I'm making ovals this time. Y'all see that? I'm going to let you zoom in. Do you see how I'm going? It's more oval than round. Long up and down ways. And I'm getting bigger as I go along. And I'm varying, what does the word varying mean? Not the same. How much paint I have on my brush at the same time. Okay. Sometimes I have a whole lot of paint and sometimes I have a little bit of paint. All right. Ooh, I like this. This is already starting to look pretty. Or I think so. Trust me, we can make it work. It's going to be fantastic. Okay. Are we almost done? Probably not. Yes, maybe. Mm-hmm. Now. I should have... Did anyone catch that? I should have wiped this off on my paper towel before I put it in my water. Okay. 
So, again, I'm still checking to see. It's still pretty good over here. No bleed through. I do have, this is really wet now, and I, in some places, I'd like to wait for that to dry just a tiny bit. So I'm actually going to just pick it up and fan it a little bit. All right. Or you could go slower so it actually dries quicker. That also works. I'm going to get a piece of paint, a water. Um, okay. We are now going to, I'm going to rotate my piece of paper again. This time I have my big ones on the top, on the left here, and then over here on the right, I have my small ones. I think I'm going to go into some pink. Do I have some girls that love pink? Pink, pink, pink. I love pink. All right. Now I have two separate pinks here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let's move that over just a tad. I have this pink and I have this dark pink. And I think I'm going to go with this lighter pink versus this dark pink for right now. I might get into that dark one, but not yet. All right. So I'm coming in. Guess what we're going to do? Put our paintbrush in the water. I, If you've noticed, I keep um, wiping it off. I can wipe it off on my, like that on my glass because I don't like too much water on here because it gets real messy real fast you have to control your water so guess what I'm making more ovals this time straight up and down because I moved my paper it's okay if they touch We'll be fine. All right. I want you to try not to have a whole lot of water on this one. So that means you may have to just not go into the water as much, right? Like, do you see? I'm just going to get some paint. I'm just getting paint. I'm not getting any more water. The reason I'm doing that. And another thing that I'm doing is I'm also not filling in my circles just as much. Now, it's getting really dry. You see how it's not doing that? Do you see that? So I am going to finally have to get some more water. But I am making squiggles around like that. I'm not painting in. Just doing shoop, 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 shoop. Yeah, you have to make that noise. Don't you love it? Call me Bob Ross. Y'all know who Bob Ross is? I know some of you do. Okay. Looking good, people. Again, I'm checking. It's looking pretty good. It is getting a little bit wetter. Because the more you add the more this paper can't handle it. Now, if we were working on watercolor paper, I wanted to show you all what that would look like. So this is that mixed media paper that I did. And I kind of played around with it. But look, no buckle, did not bleed through at all. And do you see how it makes these really neat things, these rings? Well, watercolor does that. That's what makes watercolor really, really fascinating. So, what I'm saying is, is different paper does different things with watercolor. So, just so you know that. All right. How we doing? Mine's still pretty wet. I actually kind of like this better, this side better. Does anybody like this side better? Mm, maybe not. I don't like it down here, but I do like those. Okay. I want it almost dry. Okay. Now, I'll tell you my little secret that I have. Watercolor does best if you just leave it and you let it actually just air dry. 
but I love to take a hair dryer to it. Just a little bit. I know I'm cheating. You all don't have a hair dryer. That's fine. But the teacher has to make it pretty, so just hang in there with me, all right? <laughs> That's getting much better. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted it almost dry or a little bit dry, you can continue to do this with it wet, but I wanted to show you what it's going to look like. So now it is pretty close to dry. There's little places that are a little damp, but not much. I'm getting some water on my paintbrush. And I'm going to come in here to black. Okay, I have black on my paintbrush. And I'm going to make a center. And do you see how the water piles wherever it'll pile? Even if it bleeds, that's okay. And does anybody notice that the more layers we added, the brighter these flowers got? And that is one of the things also that I love about. Um, I want you all to notice I have not gone back to the water yet with these black dots. I'm just getting black paint. One, it helps me control it a little bit better. And two, I, oh, I like those. Those look so good. Don't you like those? Oh, I love it. I'm cleaning my brush. Do you see that on my paper towel? I'm putting it in back in the water. That's good. Putting it back on the paper towel. Now, I really like this. This works really nice. I'm loving this. How about a little baby leaves? What do you think? So, I'm going to come in here with my paintbrush. Are we with me? Are you still with me? Tell me if you're with me. Come on, give me a hands up or a wave or thumbs up or something. Have I lost everybody? I don't know. I've got my green, so I'm going pure green here. This time on every single one of these, I want you to be able to do this, but I don't want them to be in the same spot every single time, okay? So, like, for example, on this one, I'm going to say... I'm going to do it like that. This one, I'm going to do it like that. And do you see how I'm just putting down some color? I'm not m trying to make some special shape. I'm always doing two. And I'm always starting at the flower and going like that. Okay? Instagram, did you still... I got a warning saying low internet. I hope it still works. I will say that my office, my studio, which FYI, if anybody's ever seen it, it's a disaster, but lots of art happens here. So, do you see how I am... Changing it up. Now, I'm using this green. But what did we just learn about the reds? That it's about layers. So, how many of you all have two paintbrushes? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I'll just do it with this same paintbrush. We've been doing everything else with that. Isn't that just so cute? Oh my goodness. That's cute. So cute. Okay, but we got about 15 more minutes and then we're done. So, you still with me? I'm going to add a little bit more green to this. So, I'm going to go to a darker green this time. Okay, so I'm taking, so if this is the green that I use, everyone saw that I used this green, I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to this color, this dark green right here. It is almost a teal color, just because I know that I love this color so much. So, I've got it on my brush, and this time I'm just going to do a, 
little dot. I'm not painting over the whole thing. I'm just doing a little baby dot on one side. On one side of that leaf. Not the whole thing. Did y'all see that? So I'm going to come in here. I'm doing it on one side. I don't even care what side it is. Who cares about where the light is and all that jazz right now? Who cares? We're just making it look more real and more bright. How are we doing? I can't wait to see these. Tell me that you're going to post about these. I want to see these pictures. I want to see our pattern that we made today. Tomorrow, I think we're going to paint little girls dresses, dolls. And see, you had to know how to do a flower because what little girls dresses doesn't have flowers on it, right? Love it. I should have cleaned up my brush. Don't you love it? Every time I do something I'm not supposed to do, you all should like say, whoops, didn't do it. Okay. I love this. I think this is working really nicely. This is exactly what I was going for today. All right. So the big thing I want to do now is I'm picking up my pen. Now, it's very important that this is dry or almost dry. You know what? Maybe we do it with a pencil. Oh, I got to find my pencil. Where did it go? Let's see if you can see it with my pencil. I would also, okay, Shannon just asked me, which is a very good question, Shannon. Should you not do this on an easel so it doesn't run? Watercolor is very, that is a very good point. Watercolor, it's best to do it flat laying down. You can do it on an easel, but you're going to get drips. It's a lot harder to control. And so, yes, watercolor is best done flat. Okay, I'm going to see if I can't make this work with my pencil. So I'm coming in here. Anybody see that? Not really. Anybody see that? How I see how that right there, I added just that amount of detail and it looks more like an actual flower. Now, I'm going to do, you can do this with your pencil, but I'm going to do it with my pen so you can actually see what it looks like. So I've got my pen and I think you'll be able to see it. So I'm coming in here and I'm using the, what's, I'm using some of the lines that my paint made to make it so the shape of the flower because right God makes every flower a little different and that's what's so great about this now y'all see that do you see how they're becoming flowers and you can even come in and do little bitty things for your f leaves too you can come in here and do some things with you could even do dots like that now all right girls tomorrow we're going to be making little dolly girl dresses and people little baby people okay nothing's fancy we're just going to doodle we're going to see what we can come up with but that's what we're going to do tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Y'all see, I'm not even worried about how this is not overlapping or anything like that. And you don't need a whole lot of things, right? Just some watercolors. You see how I'm not making a big deal out about all of these all of these little lines. Some of them don't even connect. 
It's doodling, people. Don't we love to doodle? All right? So, if you want to see the replay of this, I will have it on my Facebook page, which is Megan Bailey Gill Art. And I'll have it in the archives of that. Instagram people, I'm sorry. Instagram makes it die. So go follow me on Facebook and you can get more. I also want you to know that after this right now, the basement marketplace here in Old Hickory is having a sale. So that's where I'm headed next online. The basement marketplace in Old Hickory in Mount Juliet, whichever one you want to call it. They're having a sale and I'm announcing my cow class. So I've got a cow class coming up. It's going to be Monday and Wednesday of next week. And it's going to look like that. All right. And so what I'm saying is, is that it is a Zoom class. It is not free. It is $25. You have to talk to the basement marketplace in order to do it. But we will be painting this cow. And I'm going to go slower. It's three days. And it's going to be right after this live class. It's going to be at 3.30 Central Standard Time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So that's what that is. And you can go find out more information about that at the Basement Marketplace. I also posted about it this morning. All right, now... I want you to promise me you're going to direct message me, you're going to post, and you're going to tell, tag Megan Bailey Gill or something so I can see these awesome things. I think these are going to look so great. I can't wait to see them. All right, I hope you all had a great time. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And I will say this, the best thing to do, I'm going to go over here and do this one because he looks like he's lonely. You don't want a lonely flower. No, you got to have a match. And do you see how some of these, I put a stem through the middle of them, a line, but I didn't do it on all of them. I did it only on a little bit. Okay, so that is our first watercolor lesson. Thanks, guys. I will see you all tomorrow at 2. All right. Bye, girls.